So you'll see this little number start increasing as people roll in. Okay, great. Um, and I'm just going to let a few more people roll in first, and cool. then I'll, I'll make uh, the grand introduction. Great. <laughs> awesome. So, oh, we already have six people. Cool. Um, yeah, so welcome, everybody. I'm glad to see you guys showing up. And uh, today we have, well, actually, let me introduce myself. Hello, Bruce. Um, yes, you just rolled in. <laughs> so so this is going to get overwhelming, so okay. just try not to pay too much attention to it. Great. Um, unless, you know, like, it derails me very quickly. Yeah, sure. Um, cool. So my name is Dia Dynasty. This is the uh, weekly Le Maison de Rouge Periscope, where we have been talking more about healing trauma through BDSM mm -hmm. and sex work. Um, today we have a very special guest, Andrea Glick. Um, do you, you go by she or they? She, she? Yes. okay. So Andrea is a psychotherapist that specializes in healing trauma through um, body, body awareness mm -hmm. and, and body move, movements and uh, body work. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, Andrea also works um, or is a part of a collective called the Gender and Sexuality um, Therapy Collective. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then we also had um, Jesse from there, who is the director, a few weeks ago. And so it's really nice to have you. Yeah, thank, thank you, for, you for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe you could do a brief introduction of um, exactly what you do mm -hmm. and all of your self-appointed titles yeah. and how long you've been doing it. Yeah. Totally. Um, so I am a trauma therapist and a somatic-based therapy worker. Um, I'm a witch, I'm a dyke, um, and I have been serving my community for the last 10 years doing this work. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad that you are a self-identified witch, too, because it didn't, <laughs> it didn't take too much prompting to, to get that out of you. Yeah. And, and granted, like right now, witchcraft and magic are, are mm -hmm. kind of trendy. Um, I yeah. think that it's really great. Like, it doesn't really matter if it's trendy or not because it's like mm -hmm. a really great way to embrace personal power. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and um, personal agency too. Yeah, definitely, and to connect to really ancient spiritual practices, especially for women and yeah. queer people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, so let's talk about, you used the word somatic. Mm -hmm. What does that exactly mean? Yeah, so somatic is another way of thinking about connecting with our bodies mm -hmm. and doing that through therapy is different than um, going to like a yoga class mm -hmm. or any other or going out dancing or any other moment that we connect with our bodies because it is a little um, more contained. You get to like work with one other person. Right. Um, but it's all under the same umbrella. So yeah. any time that you are embodied, which is when you're connected yourself and other people into the world mm -hmm. um, that can be an opportunity for somatic healing okay mm -hmm. yeah so I mean something as simple as going out dancing mm -hmm. is actually I mean um, somebody <laughs> somebody want to say you're awesome <laughs> yes um, is, is a way to connect to the body and I think that um, mm -hmm. but it, it's not like I wouldn't say it's mindless but it's just not as as like focused, right? You're, you're mm -hmm. kind of just like moving to music. Yeah. But you're also in some way like kind of clearing the mind, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, and it's all about intention too, right? So yeah. like I will definitely go dancing if I'm like, I need to like clear out some stuff that is stuck in my bones or in oh, my yeah. heart. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, if you go, and I mean, anything can be mindless. Like, mm -hmm. you can go to yoga class and just, like, go through True. your grocery list. I do that all the time. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, if you, like, stay with your intention, mm -hmm. also very witchy, mm -hmm. about, like, why you've come to the mat or why you've come to the dance floor yes. or even why you've come to therapy, right? Like, you can go and just talk about what happened all week. Right. Which can be helpful, but it's not necessarily mindful. Yeah. So the mindfulness aspect is probably the more important one to hold on to. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. do you do you encourage people to just kind of do things like that, maybe without an intention? Like, is that something mm -hmm. that actually helps in any way? So it is setting an intention something that helps? No, no, without like without, going without mm, intention. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. Um, 
I think anytime you can move your your body is great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the intention makes a really big difference. Yeah. 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 I've been um, hibernating, mm -hmm. I'm not moving my body. Yeah. <laughs> right. But not moving your body is also right. That's is still something that has to do with your body. So mm -hmm. it's like the choice not to move. Right. Mm -hmm. That's definitely been. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there are good feelings coming out of that. But then, yeah. then I'm like a little stiff. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I think yes. I that is definitely a winter thing. So balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so can we talk about, uh, talk a little bit more about kind of your um, your specialty mm -hmm. in, in somatic um, work? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah I came into somatics um, when I was doing therapy at an LGBT mental health clinic, mm -hmm. and all of my clients would come into session and start going like this or cracking their neck, or would sit like this. Yeah. And I was like, something's going on here. Yeah. And they were all also trauma survivors for the most part. Okay. Um, and so first off, I was like, okay, there's a lot to do with this whole like trauma thing. How can I actually help people and not just like bring up old trauma and then like right. leave it open? Yes. But also, there the, something has to do with the body. Um, yeah. I had clients who um, would experience something that was like physically triggering and like leave their bodies for days at a time. Mm -hmm. um, I had clients who would make themselves as small as possible mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on the couch. And so I, I started to see the connection between survivorship right. and bodies um, and just like how our experiences impact our body. Yes. So that was the sort of like sparked my interest. Okay. Um, and I have definitely found that we can do the deepest work when the body is involved. It doesn't have to be only about the body, mm -hmm. especially because it can be a really scary place for people to go. Mm, I see. Yeah, I definitely, mm -hmm. I definitely feel that there is a, a huge connection between um, what happens in our daily lives mm -hmm. and how it shows up in our body. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. And yeah. Um, and so, as far as um, this connection that you've made mm -hmm. between the body and trauma, mm -hmm. um, can you actually talk about, I guess, like the the connection of, of that that you've been observing and mm -hmm. helping people through? Yeah, so what I have found both through just like studying really incredible folks who've been doing this research and this work for a long time and also just working with clients um, is very much that we, when we're not able to process trauma, which mm -hmm. is most of the time, mm -hmm. um, it has to go somewhere mm -hmm. and it usually goes somewhere in the body. Mm -hmm. And if you think about everything as energy, mm -hmm. um, Thing, like that energy gets stuck if we don't get to release it right and also when we're not addressing a mental health mm -hmm. or any sort of trauma it does have to our bodies let us know that something is going on yeah and so a lot of chronic pain and a lot of oh yeah um even like pretty serious uh health issues right. are absolutely trauma related and not necessarily from this lifetime um, which is also really important too. That is really important. Okay, I I want to come back to that because <laughs> yeah. there's, there's so much to unpack when it comes to talking about the body and like the, mm -hmm. what the body is is telling us, like yeah. body wisdom. Yeah. Um, but first of all, um, I want to kind of allow Andrea to define the difference between kink and abuse mm -hmm. as well, and and like what is trauma, and how do we not bring back trauma in, in kink. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know what, your, uh, me gold, your question is very important and we want to answer it, but if you could wait until the very end of our interview, um, we would love to answer that because that's something that I find um, actually very relative. So mm -hmm. back to um, kink and, um, mm -hmm. what's the difference between kink yeah. and abuse? <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Um, so many things. Uh, first off, consent, right? Mm -hmm. So abuse is usually the exact opposite. Um, and kink, if it is done correctly, is extremely consensual, not just like, okay, yeah, sure. It's like really talked about in depth. Yeah. Um, it's negotiated. Yes, lots of nego negotiation. Yeah. Um, and then also in abuse, there's a lot of um, pain and violence in a way that is non-consensual and emotionally damaging, whereas in kink, um, it can be really healing. Okay. Um, and there's also a lot of um, a lot of negotiation and a lot of uh, like people know what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Whereas with 
trauma, there's a pretty intense sense of chaos yeah. and a lack of control um, in a way that is not chosen. Right. Yeah. And it can be, it can overwhelm the senses in, in a way where um, mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't feel like, like you can, you can respond to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And it, I think the, the core of it is choice and care. Mm -hmm. And so choosing what happens to your body mm -hmm. um, and negotiating it. And then also that afterwards there's a lot of care. And I think both are actually equally healing. Mm -hmm. um, the aftercare mm -hmm. is, I think, just as healing as whatever scene you planned with a partner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, for those of you not familiar with aftercare, that is kind of what happens when the scene is over mm -hmm. and, um, and whatever is... Uh, needing to be talked about or kind of readdressed in a uh, normal state of mind mm -hmm. is addressed like um, for example if if you in the scene received a very hard caning um, and you have bruises then then those bruises are you know taken care of mm -hmm. if there's some, you know like broken skin or anything that you know cleaning cleaning the wounds or if it's something just like really heavy um, emotional degradation or uh, humiliation, then um, in aftercare, then you, the, the two people or the people involved would kind of make sure that, that you touch back down into, mm -hmm. um, I don't really think those things of you, or, mm -hmm. you know, like kind of come yeah. back down from, from the high of, of play, of, of imagination mm -hmm. and, and of that, that fantasy space. Yeah, right. And like, I think humiliation is a really important thing to talk about because that's such a key part of abuse, in particular in abusive relationships. Yes. Um, and so, and, and that's like not happening consensually, right? And so right. like you're, for, so as an example, right, you're like being humiliated by your abusive partner. Mm -hmm. And then um, first off, you didn't ask for that. And right. then second, there's like no care at the end of that. Or if there is care, it's to keep you around longer. Right, it's manipulation. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Which I don't find very caring at all. Um, yeah, no. Okay, so, um, so as far as kink versus abuse, those are kind of the main tropes of differentiation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. Okay, mm -hmm. and then... Um, and then when you, when you come upon somebody, like say for example, if you've seen somebody, mm -hmm. um, that is a, as a client, mm -hmm. uh, do you, can you tell what kind of trauma they've sustained by what's going on in their mm -hmm. body? That's a really good question. Um, I think ultimately I do like to hear it from mm -hmm. them, but that, yeah, I definitely use the body as a way to gather information. Mm -hmm. um, and that's also a really big part of sensory motor, which we were talking about, which is the kind of somatic therapy that I'm being trained in and practice, um, mm -hmm. which is that your client walks in and the way that they walked in the door and the way that they sit down right. just told you like everything that you need to know. Yeah, I find that so fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I think that that relates to um, the question that Meagold was asking earlier mm -hmm. about um, <laughs> about um, bioenergetics. <laughs> Uh huh. And is so is that something that you've studied? I'm I'm not familiar with that, but I'm very excited. To, okay, we'll we'll yeah. get back to that. <laughs> yeah. So so you were talking about sensory motor psychotherapy mm -hmm. just now. Yeah, and how you can learn a lot about a client. So I I would say less about the trauma type, although I do really find that that is is pretty like you are able to see a lot about someone's life from oh, their body okay. um but more so than that it's about how they feel about themselves and the beliefs right and a lot of those beliefs do come from trauma right um so like for example a like feminine person who walks into my room and um sits on the couch and sits as small and compact as right. she can get her body yeah um like that may tip me off that there's been some sort of maybe sexual trauma in her history, but mm -hmm. also I would argue that like just living in this world as a woman is traumatizing often. Yeah, so that <laughs> I would have to agree with that. I mean, yeah. I definitely can relate to that. Like yes. I don't I do not do that right now, mm -hmm. but I've caught myself in the yeah. past making myself really small mm -hmm. and taking up as little space as possible. Yeah. And that that is, uh, I don't know that that necessarily comes from a personal trauma, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like 
just the way that women are taught to yeah to, to not take up space mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah exactly so it can be one or the other or a combination of both mm -hmm. um but for someone like if someone is sitting like with their shoulders back and up I have an idea of like okay like you feel um grounded and deserving mm -hmm. and then people who make themselves like really like caved inward mm -hmm. that that tells me a lot about um their how they feel about themselves walking through the world okay yeah even when people place their hands yeah right so if they like put them in front of their like sacrum I'm mm -hmm. usually like okay like that might say something about something that's happened there um that's very mm -hmm. protective mm -hmm. or like mm -hmm. putting crossing your hands over your stomach that mm -hmm. might let me know that someone um yeah like isn't comfortable with that part of their body right mm -hmm. yeah um, I'm curious about fidgety people. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Um, it's so. What's really wonderful about the kind of therapy I'm being trained in um, is that people who fidget are um, doing something called resourcing, which is where you are using your body as a resource. So if you don't have a fidget spinner or something, right? Yeah. You have your leg, so yeah, you can yeah. like juggle your leg or like drum on your yeah. knees, and so it is a way of like moving energy through. So okay. I do usually. When I see people fidgeting, I'm like, okay, you have a little more, like, energy going through your nervous system, right. and you found this thing that works, right. and I might actually use that. If they're really upset, I might be like, let's go back to, the, like, drumming on your thighs and yeah. stay with that for a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it helps them work through totally. something. Mm -hmm. okay. And, like, those people who are really, like, stuck and maybe, like, clenching their fists. Mm -hmm. um, they're not moving. They're not moving. And right. so I might encourage them to try a little more movement. Oh, mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So movement is really helpful in mm -hmm. um, kind of move literally moving energy through your body so that you yeah. can keep, keep kind of going. Yeah, and, and I would say if I had a client who was like fidgeting all the time, mm -hmm. I might invite them to like put their feet on the ground mm -hmm. and feel what it's like to just be grounded Yeah, um, and maybe like work towards that. Okay, mm -hmm. wow, that's so yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, so, so you, okay, so there was also um, a different uh, tactic in the, um, in the sensory motor mm -hmm. psychotherapy that was more specific to, um, and, and this is what I also consider BDSM, mm -hmm. recontextualizing an experience. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit more about, um, you, you had called it memory reconsolidation. Yes, um, yeah. But so, so, my, so my, my personal um, take on I guess one of the, the more beneficial uh, and trauma healing mm -hmm. aspects of BDSM is that if you have trauma, like se like sexual trauma, mm -hmm. in a certain regard, like mm -hmm. like you were humiliated by somebody, like sexually humiliated, emotionally, mm -hmm. um, and you wanted to work that out specifically in BDSM mm -hmm. by re-experiencing that, mm -hmm. um, changing the context of something yeah. and and having a different ending mm -hmm. uh, which would be aftercare is you know ultimately coming coming back to that person and, and being like everything's okay between us you know mm -hmm. I was just pretending it was all role play it was yeah. all fake um, that to me is immensely healing because because you're almost like rewriting the story in your totally. head, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is that is that kind of what this is? Yeah, definitely. So the um, memory reconsolidation and doing like a mismatch, um, that is when you take a memory mm -hmm. and um, in therapy you would go back into that memory and actually drop the content of the memory. And all of this is um, like language by this really incredible therapist, Lana Epstein. So just want to give her a shout out for all yeah. of this. Um, but the the content is less necessary. It's about how you feel in your body, actually. Mm -hmm. So, so for in the therapy session, it would be a little more like um, bringing you back into that moment, less about being like feeling like you're back there, um, and more like your body re-experiencing the place it was in its nervous system mm -hmm. when yeah. you were there, um, and then having um, something different happen. So, for example, instead of like being frozen, mm -hmm. getting to like push against a wall, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. And I think with kink, it's really similar. Um, so in speaking of dropping the content, you don't have to relive your exact thing. So like, right. actually most of writers that I've talked to, it's less that they want to recreate their trauma, which is totally fine if you want to do that and mm -hmm. also really helpful. But um, it's less about that and it's more about being in like subspace or something. Okay. Um, or like giving someone else power, right. um, giving someone else control, feeling powerless. It's more about the... Um, like the context and less sure. about the content. Uh -huh. And then in the end, right, it's like not only that you've like chosen it, 
um, and that it's negotiated, but in the end you are cared for. Yeah. And I, I, something that's really important that I just want to like normalize is that the most common mm -hmm. fantasy for women, I'm like using the term very broadly here, mm -hmm. um, is like um, rape fantasies mm -hmm. or um, like deep submissive fantasies. And so it's not always because of trauma. Like that is just like a very, very common fantasy that folks have. Right. Yeah. So don't be ashamed. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like I, I definitely jumped into a bunch of really deep topics before we, we covered some more general topics. Yeah. Um, and so I'm sorry if I've confused anybody or if anybody has like totally yeah. tuned out. But what we're talking about is um, using kink and BDSM as a way to recover from trauma mm -hmm. or as one of the one of the ways um, in addition in to talk therapy and psychotherapy and whatever, mm -hmm. whatever else kind of formal therapy that you might be engaging in as well. Um, and then there are different methodologies, which is what Andrea specializes in because um, both kink um, and uh, therapy and, and also magic yeah, um, yeah, utilize yeah. this format of creating a container. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know that mm -hmm. I'm kind of going backwards now, like <laughs> getting, getting a little more broad. Um, can you discuss yeah. the, the parallels of, of those three? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The um, It's so the, the containment of the space, whether the space is the scene that you've created with a partner, um, it's your therapist's office, it's your body worker's office, like it can be a lot of different kinds of places, a play party. Um, it is this magical place, right, mm -hmm. where um, you are cared for, there is not this huge expectation right. um, that when you walk out, you walk back into your life, mm -hmm. um, the rest of your life, I guess, um, <laughs> and that the, the space is, is very negotiated. Um, right. And that, it, yeah, the same goes for uh, witchcraft, where you set an intention and you have a plan and you open the space and, or you open the circle and you close the circle, right? right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's also for trauma survivors so healing to have something with a beginning, middle, and end that they can expect. Yeah, and, and I think from, from, like, I guess people that haven't necessarily gone through as much trauma, like, there's there's the ability to move in and out of situations with without the need for a beginning, middle, and end. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And and then for, for, for the feeling of safety, which I think more trauma survivors care to have mm -hmm. yeah the beginning middle and end mm -hmm. is is a very important aspect of of feeling like um held in, mm -hmm. in a space yeah yeah absolutely yeah mm -hmm. okay cool um yeah. so can you talk a little bit more about um your personal um pathway into both therapy and mm -hmm. magic like mm -hmm. which came first and, and oh, how did yeah. they how did, did they mesh at all yeah that's a really good question um i am very lucky that my mother bought me a tarot deck when i was seven wow so i've been doing that since what? then that's, yeah that's an amazing she, gift yeah she's also a therapist and a witch so yeah wow. that was like that was kind of my in to witchcraft mm -hmm. um and then I also identify as a like 100th, 100th generation um, Jewish witch. Mm -hmm. So for me, my um, heritage has a lot of witchcraft, a part of it, a lot of like, again, like ritual and um, yeah. a lot of magic. So that's like a, that definitely came first thousands of years ago. Okay. okay. <laughs> and then um, I, my witchcraft also like really brought me into wanting to do healing work. Yes. Um, and feeling like. Uh, like I wanted a really solid container to do that in, right? Mm -hmm. And so some folks, um, everybody chooses a different container, obviously, a different path. Yeah. Um, but for me, I really loved the container of psychotherapy. Yeah. Um, and so that, that led me there, and I definitely started in a more, like, grassroots, um, like, working more, like, community organizations. Oh. Um, okay. and then have ended up in private practice over the years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's, so, so you're... You kind of like just found psychotherapy, like you, like that resonated with you the most in mm -hmm. in, in healing. Yeah, I um, I wanted a lot of like open doors, mm -hmm. and that is like a, a way to get a lot of open doors, right? It's like have a certain degree, mm -hmm. um, and to be able to um, yeah, like 
be able to hold a space that has been held by folks for a really long time in that way. And there's a lot of other healers that, but that was just sort of like a tradition that I felt really connected to. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't, I don't know that much about, um, about Jewish mysticism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that more kind of in, in line with, with the kind, with what brought you into witchcraft or is, is it uh, yeah. more just like Orthodox Jewish? Like, there's tons of ritual yes. just in, yeah, in yeah, the, totally. the yeah. religion itself. Yeah, I think it was like the matriarchy mm -hmm. of it. Okay. Um, right, so like women light the candles. Um, and so there's like, there's a lot of that. So that really, I think, is what is what brought me to that. But yeah, definitely like Jewish mysticism, but also um, like tradition and just like women's tradition in Judaism okay. in particular. Yeah, because mm -hmm. there's definitely a very distinct separation between what the men do and what the women do. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. But you didn't find that restrictive? Um, oh no, definitely. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. No, I'm like cherry picking. You know, I'm like I'll take uh, like the Okay. Yeah, 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 like I'm not religious. This is good. This yeah, is good. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was, um yeah, it was like a lot about the like the lineage of it and mm -hmm. like the maintenance of that tradition after like a lot of trauma. Mm. Yeah. Mhm. Mm and that and that too is what feels really powerful about it to me. Okay. Mhm. Mm so do you did you experience trauma within your religion? Um, I, is this too personal? No, no, no. Okay. Fine. No, I, I was I was like speaking more like broadly oh, about okay, like okay. right. So like how hard in general. Okay. Yeah, okay. like um, the people that I come from fought to Got maintain you. their their ritual. Yeah. Yeah, and so like wanting to like find my own like queer feminist version of that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And have you? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I think that's awesome because yeah, yeah. there's um. I guess that that's coming more to the surface now is, mm -hmm. is queer feminism and kind of yeah. how it intersects with religion and spirituality. Um, mm -hmm. And I found, have you seen Broad City? Yes. I found yeah. that show to be yeah, really totally. charming mm -hmm. because there's a lot going on. And, yeah, yeah, definitely. And they bring Judaism in, or, you know, mm -hmm. like they talk about being culturally Jewish. Yes. Yeah, and that is definitely a thing. Yeah, yeah. But in speaking of, I think we like said this earlier about like, um, like trauma over lifetimes. Mm -hmm. So um, that like intergenerational trauma and then the sort of more like scientific side, which is epigenetics, mm -hmm. um, right? Which is the study of how our biology changes because of trauma over time. Yes. Um, and so for me, um, like engaging in a like queer feminist Jewish witchcraft yeah. is very healing for my intergenerational trauma and okay. like epigenetics. And I, I work with that idea of intergenerational racial trauma a lot in the room so like with clients asking like um yeah like how like just asking about their lineage and like yeah. you know what they know what they don't know mm -hmm. um even in school like what were they taught about their people mm -hmm. because a lot of times all you're taught is like the worst things that have yeah. happened or nothing at all yeah um and so that's all really really good information for me to have with clients yeah mm -hmm. yeah and do people come to you because of, of knowing that you are jewish uh, no, I don't think so. No, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. not that I know of. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, let's see. Um, can you can you go a little deeper into, um, I guess, like a few case studies where you've seen um, BDSM and kink mm -hmm. used in a way that is healing for who have been traumatized? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I can definitely talk about some themes. I think that um, for a lot of feminine folks that come into my office who live their day being degraded by men. Um, Was that, yeah. Is that everybody? Isn't that everybody? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, that either like choosing that with a partner or um, getting to experience being super super powerful yeah um as a top or a dominant um has been really healing and oh yeah the emotional place that folks can go in a scene is usually a lot deeper mm -hmm. than you can go in like a lot of other contexts and, and i do think that the therapy office or like the table for like body work is another place where you are feeling something in your body and then you're crying or you're like right. moving through you can feel yourself moving through something right and i have a but lot it's of not always active Mm -hmm. as active mm -hmm. as like a, a BDSM scene. No, no, right. Oh yeah, no, definitely. I, yeah. I really also, yeah, with like a therapy, with like a therapy client relationship, it may take like 10 sessions to get somewhere like really juicy, but right. I think that with 
um, in a scene, like you can really go really, really deep right away, which is why that negotiation negotiation is so important. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, do you have any, I guess, like examples of 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 what you've seen, mm -hmm. you know, like kind of the progression of of what's happened over the the time mm -hmm. that the that the client who has been traumatized kind of works through this stuff. Yeah. Do you have any examples of that? Yeah, I think something that I've seen some folks do a lot of healing around is letting go of the shame for their fantasies. Mm. Um, so whether it's like I have fantasies that look a lot like my trauma that I don't want to anymore, mm -hmm. um, like working through that, or like I have a lot of shame that I want this, but I ultimately know that like this, these are my desires. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of the work in the in the therapy room and the container is about letting go of the shame. And a lot of my clients' work in their partnerships mm -hmm. um, or in their scenes mm -hmm. is getting to um, like let themselves let themselves right so like not um, shy away from like a fantasy that they have mm -hmm. um, get to like fully embrace it yeah um, and then our work is a lot more about like letting go of the shame of, of how good that felt yeah mm -hmm. yeah shame is such a huge yes. um, <laughs> block yeah yeah definitely and and it it really it dictates a lot of people's actions mm -hmm. and motivations and you'd be surprised like Yes. I bet mm -hmm. that there are laws based in shame. Like, laws yeah. in our country based mm -hmm. in, like, oh, you should be ashamed of yourself for, you know, doing this. We're going to make a law against it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, definitely. Or, like, the whole, a lot of parts of the DSM, too, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, can you tell us what the DSM is? And Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, it is, like, um, in a lot of ways, really helpful and uh, a lot of ways really hurtful. And it's basically a giant book of all of the um, different diagnoses. And some folks find it really, really helpful to have a diagnosis to work with. Right. Um, to be able to, like, own that label. Yeah. Um, I... And then also a lot of folks find it to be really harmful. Yeah. And a lot of the diagnoses in the DSM um, are very stigmatized, especially like personality disorders, which are um, adaptations from trauma. So like what I mean by that is like someone who has uh, borderline, for example, mm -hmm. has learned a really particular way of getting love mm -hmm. um, or what has like kind of worked before because of trauma in their childhood. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but that's not in the DSM, right? So it just says like, this is what the diagnosis is and like these are all the things that are like, you know, wrong with this person, um, right. but a more like trauma informed approach mm -hmm. would be looking at why that developed and how that totally. how that serves that person. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of trauma survivors do really like having a PTSD diagnosis because it's very legitimizing of their experience, especially because it's kind of newer to use PTSD for not like war veterans only. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that can happen very easily. And I feel like in this in, in this culture um, because, not just because of, of war, but because of so many crazy things happening mm -hmm. in, in our culture that are um, that are people acting out their actual traumas that are unhealed. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, um, totally. school shootings, I, mm -hmm. you know, for example, mm -hmm. there's a lot of that. Yeah. And, and it traumatizes, like, a whole mm -hmm. other group of people, and mm -hmm. then it just keeps getting passed. And so you were talking about yeah, yeah. trauma being hereditary mm -hmm. um, and genetic. Yeah, so right. um, the more like witchy spiritual part of that is intergenerational trauma, which right. is that like we carry the spiritual and energetic trauma that our ancestors have experienced, mm -hmm. um, which I think a lot of people can understand if they've ever like heard more details about what they're lineage has been through and like yeah. the way that you feel in your body yeah. like that is that and then also um I mean I'll, like I use this a lot as an example because it's more about um the people that I come from but like a lot of jokes that are made about like Jewish people being really anxious mm -hmm. um like that's an example of like mm -hmm. the way that our nervous systems have adapted mm -hmm. to having to move or escape really quickly right um and so like a lot of Jewish folks are like really on edge and like I would argue that that is like a learned behavior from yeah. trauma yeah and you can find examples of that in like most cultures yeah um, but that's one that I will usually use um, and then the more biological part is that actually when if two folks who are traumatized in a similar way have a child and oh. people usually will tend especially like trauma back. bonding yeah <laughs> right, yeah yeah or, or like marry within like right like a, a culture mm -hmm. or like um, a shared experience 
um, that trauma does change our our genetics and our biology and so then you have a an offspring or like a child that has um, those shared traits mm -hmm. of like the changed biology because of trauma and then you have like generations and generations and generations of that um, and that's why you can see like a lot of certain folks who've experienced trauma through generations have like really specific health mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. okay so how do we break that cycle <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, there's, um, I totally yeah. see what you're talking yes. about. In yeah. fact, yeah. my, my mother was born on the run, mm -hmm. um, yeah. because her mother was fleeing, um, the Japanese mm -hmm. and, and my mom doesn't really have a lot of reason to be as anxious as she is. Yeah. You know, she's got a really like leisurely life, mm -hmm. and, but she still is like pretty anxious all yeah. the time. And, and relaxing is really hard for her. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we can all probably find examples of people in our family that um, have that have that sort of, like, experience and, yeah. and the way that it changes them. Um, so, mm -hmm. so would you say that the person that needs to break the cycle has mm -hmm. the most work to do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, um, but also like when you heal yourself, I really do believe that you heal your ancestors. So it is a lot of work, but I do yeah. feel like it's worth it. That is, um, that's something I learned in Reiki, is mm, that when cool. you heal other people, you're also healing yourself. Yeah. And then everybody. Yes. Yeah. 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 Really yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is. So, um, you know, how do we, how yeah. do we stop this cycle of, mm -hmm. of trauma? Yeah, I think that addressing it and acknowledging it is the most important because I think if you look back at um, a lot of generations before us there's a lot of not talking about things yes. um, or just like surviving and like moving through it yeah. so I think that bringing attention to it and honoring it mm -hmm. um, and honoring survival too um, and like all of the ways that we have adapted to live in this world and survive mm -hmm. um, and yeah working through it whether it's with a therapist a body worker a dom, like whatever that is, mm -hmm. um, and being again like setting that intention of like I am here to like release yes not only my trauma but maybe like generations before me as yeah. well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that I mean that's that's all you can really do. Like it's not like mm -hmm. you can go back in time and do anything in a time yeah. machine. Um, and mm -hmm. I, and I feel like when you when you work on yourself. You do you, you kind of set an example for everybody mm -hmm. else to kind of give yeah. them permission mm -hmm. to, to work on themselves too. Yes. So that's that seems like kind of like a a win win situation mm -hmm. in in addressing trauma is like yeah starting on the healing path. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, is there anything that you would advise people to do when they are seeking out um, some sort of healing pathway? Uh, mm -hmm. that's alternative to, I mm -hmm. guess, psychotherapy. Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah, I think listen to your body, mm. right? So in, like, if you're not going to go to therapy or you're going to supplement therapy with something, which is more what I would recommend, mm -hmm. um, is to believe what your body is telling you and listen. So whether it's, like, um, I really need to see a ma massage therapist once a week. I really need to go dancing once a week. Um, I really need to be in like subspace once a week. Yeah. Um, to listen to that. Yeah. Um, and also that like we like healing is this beautiful intrinsic, mm -hmm. um, like valueless thing, but we do live in capitalism. And so to acknowledge that you will have to, um, like it is an energy exchange and like that is part of that as well. Mm -hmm. And to not expect to get that um, from a, from like a partner necessarily, right. um, that it's okay to go outside of that relationship to get those yeah. needs met. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really great advice. <laughs> yeah, everybody, yes. you know, um, listen to your body and mm -hmm. and give it what it needs. You know, and it's not just about food; it's it's about movement and sensation yeah. mm -hmm. and what what might like what it craves. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and like not it, everybody craves massage, you know. Right. No, no, it's true. Exactly. Like Reiki is like another really good example of that, right? It's like still healing for your body, but it's not like direct contact necessarily. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's a it's a very gentle touch. Yeah. Actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very still. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and if there's like shame around any of your desires, mm -hmm. especially in wanting to heal trauma through kink, that 
finding a kink friendly mm. kink positive therapist can be really helpful for working through that yeah do you have any suggestions or recommendations for how to do that like other than you mm-hmm. know like calling each yeah. person and asking them <laughs> yeah totally yeah so if um, you are in New York, um, Manhattan Alternative, which is an amazing listing. It's online of all queer oh, yeah. and poly and kink friendly. Yeah. Um, some folks more, like specialize in more than others in certain things. Um, but if you're in a place, which a lot of folks are, where there like aren't a lot of therapists that advertise themselves as being um, kink friendly or kink positive, to um, remember that like in a phone consultation, you are also interviewing your therapist. Yes. So ask some questions. And if they don't know, but they're willing to read a book, um, like, are you okay with that? Um, is that something that you're willing to do? Mm-hmm. Or, like, if you don't want to educate someone, that's also fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of therapists will do out-of-state phone sessions or video oh, sessions. Okay. So if you really, yes. if it's, like, important to you that you see someone who is really, really educated, that yeah. um, to look outside of, of your city or town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's yeah. a really great idea. Because mm-hmm. because technology, you know, like, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah totally. get, get healed from, yes from it um mm-hmm. do you yeah. uh are there any like special projects or announcements that you'd like to make that you're working on mm. or with the collective or anything like that? yeah yeah there is um i am starting a therapy group for queer and trans folks who are estranged from their families awesome. um and that is going to be a very trauma-informed group mm-hmm. um and that's going to be based in new york city and does need to be in person mm-hmm. um and so you can um, look us up online at the Gender and Sexuality Therapy Collective, and there's an intake form for the group. Mm-hmm. Um, and I am still accepting clients in the city and also um, remotely, so if okay. folks are looking for someone. How do they find, do, do they just Google um, Google your, your collective name? Yeah, or? yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. yeah so we're so in, mm-hmm. that would be the Gender and Sexuality yes. Therapy Collective. Yes. And just Google it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you'll be able to find all the information. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if anybody has any questions, you are now free to ask. I'm actually going to scroll uh, back to Meagold's. Um, are you familiar with body work modalities like radix or bioenergetics? Wonder, wondering if they are useful. So um, you said no to both of these. Yeah, right? no, I haven't heard of those, and I'm excited to... Um, I've read a little bit about bioenergetic. Mm-hmm. Um, it is based in Gestalt, and Alexander Lowen is the person that kind of took Gestalt and formed it into his own thing, which mm-hmm. is called bioenergetics. Okay, and it's very cool. much about where the body stores certain types of emotions and energy, mm, okay, and cool. then the, the body positions that you were, um, oh, right. Sorry, Will, William Reich, not, um, who, who did I say it was? I, I don't remember anyway. It, you're right, it is William Reich, not Wilhelmina Reich. <laughs> um, not Gestalt, but uh, William Reich. Okay, cool. And, and you've heard of... Yeah, that, um, that reminds me of something that we were talking about before we started recording about how, I'm not familiar with any of that, but I'm very excited to learn more, but that, um, that we do store traumatic energy or or like any sort of energy in our bodies and that when we get stuck in a freeze response which mm-hmm. is right when we aren't moving energy through Body um time. okay um, and cool. he, he also did the organ machine mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. have you heard of that um it, it was like this weird device that you like get inside of and it heals like anything basically like from cancer to like i don't know wow. endometriosis okay, cool and um and he was, uh, he was like onto something. Like he mm-hmm. was healing a lot of people, and uh, also stressed the importance of orgasm. Yes, yes, <laughs> which is a, another like very yes, that's a great release of energy. 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 Yes, yeah. yes. Um, Wolfram yeah. Reich is amazing. So, so, cool. he, but he he's so amazing <laughs> that that you know he got so much attention that the government basically put him in jail and called him a, a crazy person and, and wow. a quack, and that's how he went down. Mm. Which is really sad because he yeah. was he was definitely onto something and a total genius. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know, loopy, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. But we have to release that energy, whether it's through yeah. like an orgasm yeah. or like something, right? Something. It needs yeah. to get moved through, and and, and preferably pr- productive and not violent, like murder. Like we don't want to murder people. We don't want to expel energy by violence. Mm-hmm. Usually, that's the 
the goal. Yeah. Um, yeah. But sorry, one more thing. Bioenergetics. Um, stress the importance of like releasing that energy. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times people have problems releasing it, and if they're in talk therapy, like the therapist can't touch them. Um, mm -hmm. So there, so there was this kind of I don't know yeah. maybe maybe there's something there where I think this is what, why BDSM is so important because I've had to press mm -hmm. on people before mm -hmm. like if you if you are having problems like like uh, vocalizing um, sometimes if somebody presses on mm -hmm. you it's easier to get that out and mm -hmm. so that was one of the the, the yeah. methods of like uh, expelling energy. Yeah, releasing totally. energy with like like physical pressure or yes. like having them like bend over the special furniture so that they open their chest mm -hmm. up. So this was bioenergetic. That is so cool. Yeah, and also like right because your therapist can't touch you, but there are a lot of ways to or if like you're not in a scene, mm -hmm. right, and you're like I need to get I need to move this through. Um, right, we're able to do that for ourselves, even just like tapping like right below the collar. Tapping bones. is really interesting mm -hmm. to me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are ways to. Um, and I'll say that to clients, I'm like, go as hard as you need, you know, like you're moving that through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or even like massage, massaging yourself. Right. Um, yeah. As like grounding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you find that not being able to touch your clients is limiting? Yeah, I do. Um, the uh, sensory motor psychotherapy is pretty radical in the way that um, some of the movements do involve touch. Not a lot of it. Um, it would be like hands pressing. So like if, if your therapist is pushing, mm -hmm. um, you're pushing back. Um, I'll use pillows usually in between me and the person. Oh. Um, but it is okay to use hands yeah. um, as well. And um, But yeah, no, there, I mean, I, what I'll do instead is I'll be like, you should see this body worker or you should go to this chiropractor yeah because um, I can't do this for you but right. like um, but, but I talk a lot about um, like caring for your body outside of sessions and yeah. then we can process what comes up in like a very intense like body work session in, in therapy as well yeah. so that's kind of my like okay way of getting there's, there there's always a way totally yeah mm -hmm. um, and then did you have I'm sorry to keep jumping around but did you have another did you have more announcements as far as um, things that you're working on and um, yeah, so I'm working on a really interesting training uh, on trauma and resilience that I've been getting to do for activists and lawyers and any folks that have any contact um, with any traumatic circumstance, whether it's with a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a training that I'm really excited to be bringing to a couple agencies in New York. So I am definitely interested yeah. in doing that more and yeah. very willing to work with folks on what they're um, agency is able to do for that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because because I think it's helpful when people like lawyers and understand the, the, the mm -hmm. reasons and the motivations behind certain things too. Yeah, and how to um, how to in session with a, or like in a meeting with a client mm -hmm. if because right like clients are going through a lot, especially um, I'm doing this training at um, an organization that helps folks with immigration and law. Oh, and yeah. so um, you have a lot of people that are in really highly traumatizing situations. Yeah. And so how folks who aren't trained in somatic work can help their clients in the session. That's that's really great. Yeah. Um, so we had another question from Mistress Wild Iris. And I will email it to her myself. What other somatic practices... Oh, she's so sorry. Um, can you read, please? Have you found to be helpful mm -hmm. in moving... Energy. Yeah, um, I would say in the in therapy, mm -hmm. um, yeah, tapping. Um, if uh, doing some sort of push, whether you push the person or you push the wall together, mm -hmm. um, in a session. So this is more like somatic experiencing, but also um, sensory motor, which is to go inside and to see where the energy is so we don't actually have to necessarily like push or like touch something to move energy through it's about being mindful and like listening to what's happening and what needs to happen so for example like in a session a client may be like saying that they feel um are feeling like a really really intense motion and then i'll have them close their eyes and look inward mm -hmm. um and where are you feeling that okay i feel it in my chest what does it feel like it feels really like hard mm -hmm. um okay what color is it it's like really like muddy or something right and yeah. then um okay so just stay with that and then yeah. they stay with it and then where does that need to, like where does it go next well yeah. now it kind of feels like my arms are like kind of jello-y and then like it's really incredible if you just pay attention you will feel your body move it through and then i might end with is there a movement that goes with what's happening right 
and then folks might have a movement that they want to do but it really is just about giving the body space to move that through mm -hmm. and whether you do that through a kickboxing class or you do it through just like listening to your body mm -hmm. in that moment um i think that both are really helpful it doesn't have to be a really big active that's thing. true it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be some grand no crazy yeah um okay so would you say that crying is a release of energy I, I definitely feel that way. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely yeah. do. Um, crying in a way that is helpful and not flooding. So mm -hmm. not like flooding in the sense of like when folks um, are like back there reliving their trauma in a way that isn't helpful mm -hmm. um, where you are um, overwhelmed by emotion. So there's in therapy, there's the window of tolerance, which is the place of, I like to think of it as like when your eyes are welling up, right? Mm -hmm. So you're feeling, mm -hmm. it's different for everybody. This is maybe more for me, mm -hmm. but like, you're feeling, but it's not overwhelming. And you're also not just like, yeah, okay, and then this happened, and this happened. Yeah. So you're not numb, and you're not um, in a really, really yeah. hyper-aroused place, but right. you're in this really beautiful middle zone where you can really be feeling, um, and so that's the kind of crying that I that I really love. But I, I do think that in with kink in particular, mm -hmm. I think that that emotional release is, yeah, in, in, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that emotional release, um, whether it's screaming or it's crying, I think that that is... Um, a very uh, important somatic experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Wow. There's there's so um, I don't know, like the people those who've been traumatized by people entering our country illegally. It's not okay. <laughs> um. Huh. Um. People. No. What do you What do you recommend for peop for those who've been traumatized, traumatized by, by people? people entering our country? Wait, well, what? borders are not real, and so, and this also is mostly not what? our land. What are you talking about? <laughs> mm -mm, that's not. I, I don't understand why you would be traumatized by somebody entering into our country illegally. Um, yeah, do you? Um, I, I, don't, I don't see how that... <laughs> I mean, maybe I need some clarification um, as to like what you mean exactly by traumatized, um, because I'm not really sure what that. M okay, so the only thing I can think of is that mm -hmm. there was a town on the border of Mexico, um, like a town in Texas, and. Um, a lot of the people, is the law not important? Um, no. <laughs> the law is not key. <laughs> um, okay, so what I'm talking about is this little town on mm -hmm. the border of um, Mexico and Texas. Mm -hmm. And it's it's an American town, so it's Texas formally. Um, and a lot of the people that were crossing over the border were, like, taking laundry from the laundry, you mm -hmm. know, the, you know the, the clothing lines, and I guess, like, stealing you know, like, menial things, like, kind of for, maybe for survival. Mm -hmm. Like, they, maybe petty theft also, but not, like, it wasn't necessarily, like, violence and, and rape and, you know, like, yeah. um, murder. It was, like, these people were passing through this town and they they needed, maybe they needed something. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. And, and so, like, this petty crime was um, addressed by the, the sheriff of the town, um, and, and he had gotten some federal help as well, uh, in the, in the towns, people were very happy about that, but there didn't seem to be like a traumatic effect to that kind of crime. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's the only thing I can think of. Like, I'm not really sure what you mean. Um, Estembas, are you being xenophobic? <laughs> um, I, I'm... Uh, that occurs as a result of people not following our laws. Mm. Yeah, so most of the laws in this country are incredibly racist. Yeah. Um, and also, um, this isn't a lot of people's lands. This is native lands that we're on, and borders aren't a thing. And um, I could see, I see the ways that folks are fed a lot of, like, really, really racist media, mm -hmm. and that can, like, create a lot of uh, it's a, a sense of tactic. chaos. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think that's what is happening with yeah, that. I, I definitely see um, people in 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 the Midwest 
so our country must not be a thing. Or we're not talking about political <laughs> stuff here, and if you would like to talk about actual trauma or ask a question that addresses like how we can heal trauma, um, we're totally happy to take those questions, but we're not going to get into a political debate, okay? So is there anything else that you would like to tell our audience about um, anything else you're working on or mm -hmm. just kind of like general advice as, um, as, as a you know, as, as whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, that's pretty much it, I guess. Uh, you deserve to have a therapist who understands your life and isn't going to equate your desire, your kink desire, your sexual desire, your desires for anything with trauma. Um, and so, yeah, you deserve to have that. And um, I hope that folks have found this useful. And thank you so much for having You've me. You've given us so much really valuable information Thank and you. I really hope that people um, look beyond the I guess conventional methods of of healing yeah into absolutely. other more embodied methods of healing because the more that you listen to your body mm -hmm. I think the more that you're able to understand what's really going on with you um, I guess some people have shut that part of themselves off and yeah. once, once the I guess the the trauma and the chaos is over um, you do want to, you know, try to address that because it can manifest, like as you said, as chronic pain, mm -hmm. as, as illness, as yeah. all these things, and we don't want that. Yeah. We don't want that for anybody. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Andrea, yeah, thank for being you. lovely and Absolutely. For, for being here. Um, so uh, next Monday, also, we're going to have another Periscope, and we're going to keep doing this every Monday until we die <laughs> and hopefully uh, we're going to be mixing you know regular interviews with people um, in the in the kink community and adjacent as well as healing stories personal stories as well as people with expert level healing advice like Andrea um, so we hope to see you next week thanks again for tuning in Thank you. I'm Dia Dynasty and I'll see you next week <laughs>